Hello there fellow NPCs, I'm Gorman Scythe and today we're getting back into Chasing Sunsets. So, the thing that happened last time is that we were talking with Jay's friends who are a couple and a full-on brother-sister, full brothers, uh, full, so full siblings, that's the word. And we also pretty much denied ourselves from going any further with Mallory by saying uh, we are not gonna do these touching things anymore. I mean, she does need it, and I believe if we just come clean to the, um, Jay about the whole thing, that it could be possible to find a workaround. Could be possible. Because Mallory does need help. And even though uh, Kurt is not a professional in such a thing, uh, he is the only one and she feels okay with. So it could work. Especially in AVN world, it could work. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's get back into it. Coral Shores Hotel, the following night. Let's go. Wow, tonight was so much fun. When we get back to Boston, we need to perfect our pool hustle. Priorities. I need you to teach you how to, I need to teach you how to dance first. Then we can perfect our pool hustle. Your moves? Nobody was watching me anyway. Trust me. Plenty of people were watching both of us after getting ejected from the mother's room. In my defense, it just looked like an overlooked restroom. You crawl in the, into bed with a yawn, and you're out almost as soon as your head hits, hits the pillow. Jay makes a valiant effort to fall asleep, but the evening espresso martinis have other plans. Dude, that thing is massive. I mean, I have to block it out, but that thing almost reaches down to his knees. God damn, it's bigger than my fucking arm. God damn it. It's like my own mind is sending me constant dick pics. Here's dick pics. If I don't get this constant horniness under control, he's gonna think that's all I'm about. And again, maybe it's down for one of my patented pouncings. Out gold. Go figure. Jay admires your sleeping form with equal parts affection, frustration and desire. Alternate plan then. Just a peek, followed by a little uh, self-soothing. Dude, that thing is looking right at me. <laughs> Her eyes light up as she uncovers you, a restraint slipping where whatever shackles held them in check. How did I even fit that monster inside me? A subtle hitch in your snoring causes her to hesitate. Desires defeats caution in the end, and she reaches out to tentatively caress you. I love that about him. I barely need to touch him, he gets so hard for me. I love how it feels when it gets bigger and heavier in my hand. I just need a little taste. Ooh. She's about to begin using her mouth when the sensation of being handled startles you awake. This is becoming a pattern, sis. Oh! God! This is totally not what it looks like. As usual, you were hogging the covers. I get a little tug and it just flopped out. Can't wait to hear the part of the story where Mardig just threw itself into your hand. Okay, o okay, I may have a problem. If this is wrong, I don't want to be right. But my constant, I mean, you sure I'm not too much? Oh, I'm sure. Too much is right on your warning label. Luckily for us, I'm kinda into that. So, keep going. I haven't used the safe word, have I? One thing I think about a lot is how much fun we have when we're on the same page. We're lovers now. I need to just tell him what I want. But before we talk about it, I need to lose some of these clothes. And that means I will be seeing you guys real soon. 
and we're back and I mean that was a lot uh, let's see about 15 minutes uh, long and then we send it two weeks later what the hell um, uh, that's a lot of things that's going to happen in two weeks and we don't get to see any of it especially with them developing their relationship whatever it might be uh, as well as Mallory and Amanda's part of the relationship, you know? All that is just being left out, unless we're getting yet another um, journal update. Which... I, I'm not sure if I like them doing it that way. Why aren't we not there for it? Why do we only get it as a reminder of things that did happen? We, we'll see how it goes. L let's continue. Journal update. The last couple of weeks have flown by, thanks to our crazy schedule. I managed to score points with George and Lisa by expanding on Jay's win. Since Polygen is still in legal limbo, we couldn't begin the campus expansion. I convinced the Minister of Lands to clear and grade the new parcel Jay negotiated. This allowed us to honor the court order while still breaking ground as a public works project. Even though my day is still full, my days are still full, it's a rewarding seeing the to-do list dwindle. At least the evenings have been pleasant, though I couldn't exactly call them relaxing. He's been very cautious about our secret getting out. Learning we may share a mother is part of that. The way the on result isn't helping. The lab sequencer went tits up when Sophie put Jay's DNA through. <laughs> When we... After waiting a few days for parts, Sophie ended up sending her samples to stateside. While she prefers to meet up away from the others, sometimes she gets impatient. Oh no. Now that we've crossed that line, Jay goes out of her way to prove she's all in. When she lacks in experience, she makes up for impassion. Lisa has been visiting in the evenings to go over work stuff. While it's been professional, I can tell she gets a rise out of teasing Jay and Mallory with her visits. <laughs> My interview with Inspector Stewart on Mom and Dad's crash was short and frustrating. He knows more than he's saying, and hoped I could identify a man I might have seen in Sicily. He showed me grainy photos of some bald guy taken from a distance. But it wasn't anyone I recognized. At this point, all we can do is wait and hope he can uh, piece the puzzle together. The chef's affinity for teaching uh, has uh, met its match with my kitchen skills, however. <laughs> wait, the chef's affinity for teaching has met its match with my kitchen skills, however. Does that mean she is incapable of teaching you? I think that's what it means. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> Cooking may be a talent I will never master, but damn I if I can't have fun trying. Will! Oh, it's the Swedish chef. No, no, it's a French chef. Where's the Worcestershire sauce? Where's the Worcestershire sauce? Strangely, Tanaka never loses her cool with me in the kitchen. Borka, borka, bork. And also, it's not supposed to be a slash. If it's a slash through the O, it's a Danish R. Uh, we have two dots on top of our R's. Uh, the Swedish chef is Swedish. Bork, bork, bork. <laughs> bork. 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 She just seems quietly happy to have company while she works, even if it is mine. But it feels good to have purpose. My selfish mind still often drifts apart, drifts back to Aspen. I don't miss the people so much as the feeling of only living for the moment. Okay, I miss the people too. Ricky and... Uh, I forget her name. Lisa? No? That's the CEO. That's our guide. Uh, one thing is certain at this point. There are some big decisions ahead of me. Mentor is what I meant, not guide. Uh, George said a new judge has been assigned to the lawsuit, so hearings will be next month. Okay. Hopefully, whatever is on the thumb drive Christian gave us will help us in court. 
It still wouldn't surprise me if Christian is full of shit and is full of furry porn. Hey! Oi! Mm. Don't, don't hate on furry porn, my guy. It's good shit. <laughs> the sun says repairs are finally complete. And they reflooded her dry dock today. The formal transfer of ownership is just 10 days away. That might be the only thing so far that me and uh, the dev, dev has uh, an issue with. Uh, he's not saying furry porn is bad per se, but uh, he's saying uh, the piece of shit Christian would, uh, that we hate would enjoy it. So it must be bad. <laughs> the formal transfer of ownership is just 10 days away. Handing her off to, a, to the buyer would be the final item to tie up before we fly home. As we wrap things up here, I know it will be harsh, hard to say goodbye to Oliver, Bianca and even Rinko. The following evening. The sequencer is back online, so you should have my test results back tomorrow. Apologies for interrupting, but is Mallory running any errands for you? I don't think so. Why do you ask? She is late for her waxing appointment and her phone has been powered off. George and Lisa are at a gala in town so I doubt she is doing anything for them. This is very odd. I was tracking her phone until it went offline at the pier where the sunset was refitted. Jay shoots you a perplexed look. Guard tier violations of privacy aside, that does seem strange. Maybe she's with Oliver? Captain Oliver is currently in his room with Dr. Allard. They are having loud sex. Ooh, wow! Uh, good to know! Historically, Mallory is uh, on time for 98.8% of our planned excursions. She is annoying punctual. If her phone went dark, it's probably worth looking into. In spite of her lasonic, laconic expression, you can detect relief in Amanda's eyes. Thank you. I have shared the last location of her phone before it was powered off. Wait, I'm coming with you. I'll text George to see if he knows anything. A brisk walk later. Hmm, we're standing right on top of Amanda's waypoint. Wait, do you hear voices? And also, is this where we met uh, uh, th this scene, same kind of scenery, uh, where we met uh, Lexi Diamante's um, manager, agent? Is this the place? It looks like the same place. Not in game, just the same stuff that you make in same. What the fuck am I trying to say here? Wait, do you hear voices? Yeah, let's try to get closer. Quietly. Sneak on board and inching towards the stern, you can faintly hear a male voice over the lapping surf. You glance at Jay inquisitively, and she just shakes her head once. Let's get eyes on this. Edging forward, you sneak into position to assess the situation. Wow. Peering around the bulkhead, you're surprised to see Mallory bound by the rail. What the fuck is going on here? Who is that? Mallory appears semi-conscious and oblivious to what is going on around her. Catching her at the boutique was a stroke of luck. An hour from now, this loose end will just be a missing persons report. The man cuts the call short and turns enough for you to get your first good look at him. Why does it look so familiar? Tough break, girl. In hindsight, I should have just taken care of you after I did your old man. So Mallory's dad wasn't a suicide. Without any word, the man squats and grasps Mallory firmly by the throat. Well, he's an idiot because you can easily tell if someone's... Uh, well, I wouldn't know, honestly. But if someone has uh, crushed pipes... Just keep her on the water, you know? Jake, call the cops! Without waiting for her to answer, you step resolutely out into the open. Hey there, friend. You must be the buyer George was talking about. 
At the sound of your voice, the man stands and faces you menacingly. Well, there goes my early flight. Look, I don't know what's going on here, but the cops are on their way. If you fuck off now, maybe you'll be in the wind by the time they get here. The man dismisses you and turns his attention back to Mallory. Hang tight, boy. I'll be right with you. I don't think you understand. I'm cutting in I'm cutting in line. In response, he just utters an annoyed sigh and draws a wicked looking knife. Suddenly you recognize the man from the photograph Inspector Stewart shares shared during your interview. You For the first time the man hesitates as he realizes you recognize him. Impossible. Nice try, kid, but we've never met. While you're stunned by emotion, he begins closing the distance between you. This is him. Killed mom and dad. Yes, and now he plans to kill you, Kurt. David? Oh, you're having an out-of-body experience here with David. This man is a professional. He won't negotiate and he won't waste words on you. You're going to tell me to run. Is that really what you think? That's what you always said that I should do. I told you that you almost always have more to lose than the other guy. You think that's the case here? No. People will get hurt if I stand by and do nothing. That was the lesson. You fight only when the cost of doing otherwise is unthinkable. A rush of emotion nearly overwhelms you. The struggle for words. David, I... Choosing to lay down your life for another is the highest calling anyone ever faces. For me, in that moment, there was only one answer. Just as it is, just as it is for you now, my brother. Now, do what you must, Kurt. It is time to become the lion. You snap back into the moment, surprised to find your whole would-be murderer still the three steps away. Uh, well, what's happening? Kurt? A strange serenity washes over your body as you transition into a defensive stance. That knife is the X-Factor. If we can neutralize it, I'll leave the odds. Your attacker lunges in with a probing slash intended to test your reaction time. There's not a lot of room to maneuver here. I won't be able to stall him with footwork. He steps into a thrust, forcing you to dodge. Almost too late, you realize it was a setup for a vicious reversal that nearly guts you. Suddenly, you see a flash of red out of the corner of your eye as Jay sneaks towards Mallory. You're a wanted man. Mm hmm. You never get off the island. Yeah, I must have hit my head. At the sound of Mallory's voice, the man turns his head slightly to shake his mark. This is the closest thing to an opening I'm, go I'm going to get. Realizing his mark is on the verge to of escape, he turns and begins advancing towards the woman. Towards the women. You thrust forward to put yourself between them, but don't see his jab until it's too late. Oh! Bitch! Did not expect that! You realize too late that he's a step ahead of you. And you were his target all along. The pain of the blade piercing your abdomen feels distant compared to the force of the impact. Oh my god, Kurt! You hear a heartbeat in your ears. And your vision blurs as time comes to a halt. What was I thinking? You nearly black out from the pain as he twists the blade slightly in an attempt to withdraw it. You can see it in his eyes. He knows he's won. Before you can dwell on it further, he wrenches the blade out of you and gives you a quick nod. Respect. You feel a brief chill touch across the throat before you a comforting warmth. What?
What? I didn't even get to do anything. You need to feel yourself fall, nor head the panic screams of the girls before darkness takes you. Oh, son of a bitch! I didn't even get the sh chance to escape, I mean. Huh. And I can't even click on them. Vince and the price of board of director Paris in Oh! You bled out while Vince completed his contract on Mallory. Your sister was in the wrong place at the wrong time and became a loose end. You were buried next to your sister in a plot adjacent to your mother and father. The price of the lawsuit failed, but George sold the polygene and donated the proceeds per the Campbell's wishes. Lisa moved up to head Space C, beating the competition to Mars by a full three years. Rinka Tanaka became a celebrity chef known for her scaling commentary on numerous chef network shows. Amanda focused on all, all of her considerable talents into identifying her friend's killer. Vince and the prize board of director perished in an unsolved terrorist bombing two years later. Now what? It just starts over. Well, I'm not obviously not gonna stop here. Uh, I know what I did wrong. I was supposed to train with Tanaka. But the fact that I couldn't even run away feels like bullshit. Huh. So therefore, that will be it for today's episode. And I will spend some time fixing... Mm, what I've been doing so that I can train with Tanaka. Fuck. Thank you guys for watching. And thank you, Joseph, for donating directly to my coffee page. I'll see you guys in the next one. And remember, you can die at any time. Goodbye.